The biggest question on everybody's mind is why so many dogs are tearing their ACLs. And of course, you as a pet owner want to know that. Me as a pet owner, I want to know that too. And as a veterinary surgeon, uh, I want to know that. And we don't have a straightforward answer. Uh, we've looked at all types of issues on weight and size and uh, conformation, uh, breed, and, and, and we're not coming up with clear-cut answers on underlying common denominators. But we do think that dogs tear their ACLs by chronic biomechanical stress, uh, unlike a human. I mean, a human tears their ACL with athletic trauma as acute, quick injury, and dogs, we think, happen little by little over time. And a lot of that has to do with the anatomy in dogs versus humans, and I've got my uh, knee pants on today, so first let me show you a human knee. And in humans, the top of the tibia is pretty level, and maybe four to five degree slope, but pretty level. And the way that we tear our ACL is a football player hits us from behind, the tibia thrusts forward, and stretches and acutely tears the ACL. On the other side of my pants is embroidered a canine uh, stifle joint. And it, the big difference is in a canine stifle joint, the tibial plateau slopes down and back. So when dogs bear weight, they do this chronic little sliding motion. And that little sliding motion puts the ACL under chronic biomechanical stress. And we think that is a key component uh, to the reason why dogs are tearing their ACLs. Uh, so that's, that's the difference between humans and dogs in the mechanism. I've got some arthroscopic photos from four different patients that kind of show that progression. Uh, and so the first one's a normal ACL that I'll show you. The first is a normal uh, ACL and uh, it's a nice broad ligament with tight fibers. Uh, the next is uh, a ACL that has become loose, uh, it's degenerate, it's starting to fall apart. You can see when I push on it with a probe that it is uh, soft and it, that should be a really dense ligament if normal. And we think that progresses into actual fibers tearing free and this would represent kind of the classic partial ACL tear with fibers free and we think that then goes on to a full blown out ACL which is what we see in this patient where it almost looks like a mop head that's been ripped in half with all the uh, big fibers. Uh, and so to summarize, we don't have an exact reason why so many dogs are tearing their ACL, but we think the common denominator is this chronic biomechanical stress. And that's one reason that when we think when a dog starts to tear their ACL, they are virtually always go to full tear. In fact, there's no documented case uh, anywhere in the literature uh, where a ACL starting to tear in a dog and it stops tearing and heals. We think that doesn't happen because of that chronic biomechanical stress. That sliding motion that creates that biomechanical stress, that's also why dogs don't do well with an ACL tear that's not repaired because as they bear weight they slide on the tibial plateau. So that whole biomechanical uh, aspect uh, it, it is an important key point to why dogs tear, why we feel like dogs need repair to have a good functional life if they are tearing or torn, and it really dictates for many of us how we do the repair. So from that, let's move on to the clinical signs you would expect your, your pet to have, your dog to have, if they tear their ACL.